Along the skirts of the dead marshes, I followed it, and then I had him. Lurking by a stagnant mirror, peering in the water, as the dark eve fell, I caught him, Gollum. He was covered with green slime. He will never love me, I fear, for he bit me, and I was not gentle. Nothing more did I ever get from his mouth than the marks of his teeth. I deemed it the worst part of all my journey the road back, watching him day and night, making him walk before me with a halter on his neck, gagged until he was tamed by lack of drink and food, driving him ever towards Mirkwood. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we are taking a look at what happened during the Hunt for Gollum, made more famous recently with the announcement of the Andy Serkis movie coming in the next few years. Now, I created the script last week, and I'm sure that in the time since, some or many YouTubers have and will make similar videos about these events, since it's all around the news in the Lord of the Rings fandoms at this point, but I also wanted to offer my thoughts as well. Related sources will be in the description and cards. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me today. Let's begin our tale. Now, the interesting thing that this movie will certainly have to address is that even if Andy Serkis is the focal point of the story, much of it will have to be told through the lens of the hunter, Aragorn. In 3001 of the Third Age, the same year as Bilbo's birthday party and leaving from the Shire, Gandalf suspected more about the One Ring and the one named Gollum who had carried it before Bilbo. Now again, there's questions to be asked of whether this movie will or will not be according to Peter Jackson's canon. As, while it's not specifically stated one way or another, it seems that Bilbo's birthday party at the beginning of the Fellowship of the Ring movie isn't too much longer before Frodo leaving the Shire, as it is in the books, 17 years. So, we're going to have to address that in this film of when exactly does this happen. While there was already a watch put on the Shire by the Dúnedain of the North, the last remnant of the North Kingdom, that watch was doubled after Bilbo's party, and the leader of the rangers, Strider, was sought after by Gandalf. Gollum did come forth and was spotted by this watch, but he eluded them and escaped, according to Gandalf recounting these events later during the Council of Elrond. Gandalf worried about what Gollum knew, and how the One Ring had changed him after all these years and how his information may actually aid the Dark Tower. After locating the ranger, Gandalf requested that Aragorn himself help him in finding Gollum. By this point, Aragorn was 70 years old, and had already had many adventures that took him south and east, but there were none so delicate and articulate a matter as finding Gollum. Yet Aragorn agreed to do this for his friend, stating that the heir of Isildur should atone for the sins of his forefather. Yet their search did not really begin in full earnest until... 3009, and Aragorn left the north behind with Gandalf, who would help him for some time. Aragorn went forth and explored the lands east of the Misty Mountains and southwards towards Mordor, and exponentially, Aragorn grew as a tracker, as Gollum is potentially the most difficult thing to track in Middle-earth. It also seems that according to the lore, Gandalf was with Aragorn for at least part of his tracking of Gollum here if not all of it. Starting in the Vales of Anduin, Aragorn walked the same ground whereupon his forefather Isildur was slain during the disaster of the Gladden Field, searching for any sign of the creature. This was the best place to start, surely, as after Bilbo had acquired the ring, the woodsmen near Mirkwood reported a ghostly creature that drank blood and perhaps ate children. Gollum certainly would have come this way according to what Aragorn would have known at the time, as well as that the ring was originally lost here by Isildur, as it would come to be known by Gandalf, and Gollum would have surely been hounding the steps of Bilbo after the Hobbit had taken the ring during his adventure. Yet nothing was found here, and so Aragorn moved on closer to Mirkwood, as the creature likely hated the sun, having spent so much time underground, and again, Bilbo passed this way. Still, nothing. Aragorn then adventured further in the untold wilderness of Ravanion, for his own men had a hold in Eriador, and if Gollum came that way, he would know. Still, he found nothing. For years, this search went on intermittently for both the ranger and the wizard, but nothing came of it, searching from the Misty Mountains to the Ash Mountains and the very fence of Mordor. At last, Gandalf despaired of the search and sought to find another way to see if Bilbo, now Frodo's ring, was indeed the One Ring, which is when he would go on to find the scroll of Isildur in Minas Tirith. But as for Aragorn, as he began to make his way back from the lands in sight 
of the Black Gate in the Morgul Vale, he at last came upon something. Footprints in the muds of the Dead Marshes. He tracked these and eventually found Gollum, who had been released from his capture in Mordor, which the West would later come to discover. Taking Gollum captive, not gently and not without receiving some bites himself, he grabbed the slimy creature and then Aragorn sought for his allies where Gollum could be held and would not escape. Therefore he struck northwards, traveling up Eminwil, near the Anduin, crossing at Sauron Geber, to evade the servants of Sauron east of the river Anduin, and following the eaves of Fangorn that became Lothlorien. Strider brought his quarry to the Golden Wood of the Lord and Lady. The Elves of Lorien sent a message to Gandalf, wherever he could be found, that Aragorn did in fact catch Gollum, and Aragorn continued onwards, seeking the aid of the Bjornings near the Carrock to help him cross the River Anduin once again with Gollum and come at last into Mirkwood. Gollum was brought to the halls of Thranduil, where he would be safely locked away in the very cells that Thorin's company were once jailed in. From there, Aragorn would come once more back into Eriador, his incredible task completed. Proof of Gandalf's faith and trust in Aragorn was well established indeed. It was now 3017 of the Third Age, and the fate of the Age was now hastening towards its conclusion. Sometime after his capture, Gandalf would journey to Mirkwood, questioning Gollum, and trying to piece together the narrative concerning the Ring through Gollum's broken speech of anger, self-pity, hatred, and misery. This would be told to Frodo the following year in April, and that would give Frodo the initial knowledge of his quest that he would begin later on. After all of this, Gollum would use an orc ambush to his advantage, and would escape the elves and flee into Moria. Aragorn would lament that the elves lost him, but Aragorn would come to know that it was the will of a far greater doom that Gollum found his way out of the clutches of the elves and would go on to help Frodo during the quest of the ring. But yes, that is the tale of the hunt for Gollum. I hope that, like the fan film, the adaptation is quite faithful to the lore and even expands on it in some appropriate ways. Indeed, if we can find a good way to depict Aragorn, Gandalf, and Gollum particularly in this film, I expect a great deal of excellence, as I already do based on what we know about it so far. I was recently re-watching the Fellowship of the Ring film, and I noticed Gandalf saying that Gollum was released from Mordor to Frodo while they were in Moria. Now, the interesting thing about this is that if the film fits the Peter Jackson canon, I wonder if this will be a bit out of place, seeing that Gandalf spoke to Gollum after he was released from Mordor, and he would have known that already, according to book canon. But again, in the film, this isn't so clear, and seems a bit out of place, as there's a different sort of time jump happening here than what happens in the canon. Just an interesting detail that I thought I would mention. But what do you all think about this and what is to come? Let me know in the comments below. And so, my friends, we come to the end of our tale on what happened during the hunt for Gollum. From this tale, we see that, even in the faintest of hopes, and when it seems our quarries are lost, we may yet find what we seek, if fate and skill deem it so. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this tale. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts on the hunt for Gollum? both the canon and the upcoming movie? Let me know in the comments below. Are you excited for this tale to be adapted? Let me know. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider getting some candles from our friends Mythology Candles or order some Wetter United Cutlery Lord of the Rings swords, statues, or other replicas from Castle Khan, who also does international shipping. And use the code WEST at checkout, and please check out our merch and Patreon. Also, please check out Zwood and their wood-carved maps and clocks, and use the code in the description for 15% off at checkout. And thanks to our Valor to patrons and YouTube members, Peter Shepard, John Hume, Maz Gibbs, Reese Jenkins, Arthur Merlin, Theodore, Moon Viper, Andrew Carlisle, and Zumi. Thank you all, I really appreciate it. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. And I'll see you all again next week with a video on why was Elrond so powerful? My friends, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.